Let's bring in now Paul Kelly, editor-at-large at The Australian. And, Paul, as Hannah touched on there, the Prime Minister's announcement of the flight suspension, of course, it's got its sporting implications, but implications for, for thousands of Australians stranded in India. But uh, the situation is just quite simply dire in that country right now. Well, it's an absolute crisis in India, Kieran. And, of course, the government's made two announcements today. On the one hand, we are providing... Uh, emergency uh, medical equipment to India to try and help India through this extraordinary crisis, which seems to be the worst we've seen in any country since the start of the pandemic. And then, not surprisingly, uh, the Prime Minister has made it clear there'll be a pause in uh, plane arrivals from India till the middle of next month. But I think we can assume that the government will be guided by progress and what happens. Uh, so that issue will be um, uh, flexible to a certain extent. Um, so um, uh, clearly, I think we shouldn't be surprised at the Prime Minister's announcement. Um, the government feels that it can't risk uh, any more difficulty with people arriving from India. And I think at the end of the day, that's understandable, although it's a regrettable decision. I think that there are about 8,000 Australians in India who want to get back. So far, since the, part, since the start of the pandemic, I think we've brought back about 17,000 people from India. So everything depends, of course, on what happens with India's capacity to try and contain this virus. Now... When you look to, as you said, the government indicating it will reassess closer to the time, but then we can't... Surely there's not a situation where we leave citizens indefinitely, not just in India but around the world. How do you see this unfolding, Paul, over the next 12 months? Because, of course, you've got the complexity of rolling out the vaccine, you've got the difficulty of repatriating Australians and the risks inherent in hotel quarantine... I wonder, does the Jane Holton recommendation of Howard Springs and that sort of facility, does the government say, look, we've got to put that into overdrive? That's the way we've got to operate now. Well, the government's going to be under pressure because as the vaccine rolls out, um, it will be under pressure to ensure that it can uh, bring back uh, to this country all the Australians who do want to come back. I mean, the point about hotel quarantine is that it's worked pretty successfully. If, it, if you just look at the numbers... But uh, no system is perfect. And, of course, the st some of the state premiers are up in arms about it and are talking about other measures. So there's no doubt the government, I think, will be under pressure in terms of what it does. Um, but it's very clear, I think, that the, uh, the bulk of the quarantine arrangements are still going to be that hotel quarantine system because... It's going to be too difficult to set up some alternative system. And the government continues to point out that if you just look at the numbers and the statistics, then the system's worked fairly well. Uh, that doesn't mean it won't be an ongoing source of political uh, dispute. I think that's inevitable. And that's very clear from what the premiers have been saying. Paul, I want to get your analysis on this intervention, which... Uh, it's got a lot of attention today. Michael Pizzullo, the Secretary of Home Affairs, he's one of the most experienced and certainly respected by the government public officials. He would have thought about the impact he was going to make with that email to thousands of his own staff. He would have known it was going to be public. And the language is... is uh, well, it's very strong rhetoric, Paul, in terms of the drum beats of war, is how he put it. Well... I guess the point I'd make about this, Kieran, is that it's quite a lengthy message and it's clearly written uh, to be read in full, to be read in total, and it's about two speeches given by great American generals, uh, MacArthur and Eisenhower, and then Michael Pizzullo relates this to the current situation. So... He's clearly written this to be read in full. And if you read it in full, most of it is very balanced and measured. It's about support for the Australian Defence Forces. It's uh, making an argument for peace. And it's arguing, however, 
that we live in a very, very uncertain world where the military risk is increasing and we've got to be aware of the fact that there is a risk here uh, and a risk that we could be involved in military action. Now, I think the problem with the piece is uh, this phrase, drumbeat, drumbeat of war, uh, because this turns into a media headline, this turns into a newspaper headline pretty much automatically, and you lose the overall balance in the piece. So I guess that's the, that's the point I'd make about it. Um, in relation to that phrase, what he says is um, that uh, the drumbeats of war might sound faintly and at some distance from Australia, or they might sound more loudly and closer to Australia. Um, I think, however, that the way this is being depicted and the phrase drumbeats uh, is certainly going to create uh, a degree of uh, political attention, and that's happened already. It certainly has. And it, my understanding is that he does send out quite regular all-staff emails, normally quite uh, erudite uh, messages. Um, this one with that little mention does attract the attention. I, I just wonder whether it hampers or helps his... You know, there's a broad view that he wants to be Secretary of Defence. I wonder if it helps or hinders that, that ambition, Paul. Well, he's a very logical candidate uh, to be made Secretary of Defence. Uh, he began his career in defence um, and he's had very substantial input. In fact, he's been the prime architect of defence white papers in the past. He has uh, an effective working relationship with Peter Dutton. He was instrumental in establishing the Department of Home Affairs, which has been the major bureaucratic initiative of the last several years. Mm. With yep. Peter Dutton now in defence, uh, there's been an expectation that Mike Pizzullo would also go into, into defence, although I think it's fair to say that he'll have to remain at Home Affairs uh, initially, uh, given that there's a new minister in Home Affairs. We'll have to see how all this uh, plays out, but um, at the end of the day, the decision will come down to Scott Morrison and Peter Dutton, and we know both of them uh, rate Mike Pizzullo very highly. Yep, good point, Paul. Thank you. I appreciate it. As always, talk to you soon. Thanks, Kira.